my dear friends uh, power system protection is going on it will go on for 80 videos meanwhile we are starting a new topic which would be of very great interest to you particularly the industrial engineers for students this is little tough but all those who are in industry uh, do need these these things so for them particularly i have planned this topic engineering procurement how to procure the equipment right? engineering procurement and construction commissioning that means interaction construction and commissioning of 66 by 11 kv substation for the time being i have taken 166 by 11 kv substation no doubt i will not be talking on structural part mechanical part i will be restricting myself to electrical part right so in electrical part if you really hear my video you should be able to construct a substation should be able to commission a substation from scratch from scratch means uh, completely plain land is lying and on that you can construct you see uh, my knowledge and my oratory is not based on books i am not reading books and doing uh, I have gone to many substations and I have seen many erections also, many power stations and after that I am speaking. So I think this will be a very important video and I would like to go through that fully. Uh, this video, I am sorry it will not be for half an hour, it will probably cover one hour because you see it is not possible to cover this within half an hour and such 20 sessions will be there to complete the uh, subject so we will be in parallel power system protection and epc engineering procurement and construction commissioning is shortly known as epc and many industrial people are doing this and uh, those who are in uh, electrical mechanical industry they know that epc has a very high value so going further my dear friends our content is going to be this we will see the substation layout lightning over voltages isolator circuit breaker ctpt power transformer and substationary thing uh, we will go into little details of this because before procurement you should know things uh, in gb i was deputy engineer and coming from the institute i had not experience in power plant but because i was specialized specialist in power system protection i was given a job in engineering cell which was rather difficult we had engineered 210 megawatt unit 5 22 engineers were there and five electrical engineers were there so at one point we had to discuss with some eight ct manufacturers so we had some specifications uh, they were not complying with our specification at certain places. So one by one, I have to discuss. And the South Indian lady was sitting. Uh, some of the engineers were not following the stenotypist because they were not knowing good English. 
but because I'm quite good at English, I called Sarah, Sarah and typist. She was typing. So first I have to ask the question to the first person that these are the places where you are not matching. So it is quite possible that he may say that the thing which I am providing is providing is better than what you are asking for. Then I have to ask how is it better and all and I have to discuss with him. And sometimes he may say that yes, I will I'll be able to provide. It is not difficult. Uh, then I have to say that you can add your uh, price bid because in engineering, uh, price bid is never opened first. First only technical bid is opened. The persons who are technically specifying their price bid only will be opened. So the uh, that that thing I had to do and with eight and city manufacturers means they are knowing ins and outs of city. I was not city specialist, but then I uh, actually I was not alone. Executive engineer was there and he was doing the. Uh, uh, he was discussing, but within five minutes he got a call from chief engineer. He went. One consultant was also there. He was about 25 years old. Uh, but he got fever and he was. Uh, sent to the Hotel Express in Baroda. So I was all alone and uh, not with very big experience. You see, because before that, I had three years in PNT, three years in Baroda meters, and three years in GB. So uh, with uh, very little experience of eight years, I was talking to city manufacturers. So these are the things you have to do. So substation layout will understand little about lightning over voltages so that when you talk with lightning over voltages, they may not know that you are not knowing anything about it. They may know that you are knowing quite a bit. Quite a good many things you are knowing. Similarly, isolator, circuit breaker, CTPT, power transformer and substation thing. Very important part is substation thing. So we will be talking about these seven things in in 20 sessions of mostly one hour each. So uh, you may have to take out one hour time or you may hear for one hour and pause and you may hear for another one hour next day. That is possible. But the subject is quite interesting. But uh, mind you, I am talking about AIS, air insulated substation. I am not talking of GIS. GIS, uh, we may talk on some day. I may not talk and I may call somebody else who is an industrialist and is doing commissioning of GIS. So he is, I, I heard his lecture, he is giving very good lecture on GIS. So uh, we may call him to give. Uh, lecture on GIS that is quite possible. Uh, so right now I am talking on AIS, air insulated substation. So going further, my friends, what all you have to do before substation design and practice is first thing substation is not existing, therefore load is also not existing. You do not know what is the load, so you will have to predict the load. How you can predict the load? There are ways and means. First step in substation design is prediction of load. What you will do? You will go to Urban and Rural Planning Commission of India or state and ask them that what you are planning in next, because everybody have next five year plan. So in next five years, what you are planning? industries, commercial complexes, what you are planning that you have to ask him and uh, what will be the load approximately. So you can note down that and at what voltage you want the electricity that also you will ask. Then you will go to municipal authorities. You will ask them get how many number of societies we are going to plan in next five years. Number of shopping and commercial complexes being planned street lighting 
and power for lifting water to over tanks in municipality, school, college, schools and colleges being planned in the next five years. How many schools and colleges you are going to uh, approve? And very important government and non-government uh, offices. That is also important. And yet more important is uh, sorry, yet uh, yet uh, more important is central state government for government industrial estate because there are many 450 volt industries uh, taking power up to even 50 kW. So in, in such a case, you see, uh, you should know because that is a big component, right? So Considering all this, you predict data. So no doubt when we are doing this business, uh, we will we will understand that we have predict predicted load, uh, predicted load data, and uh, that for that we will be running 11 kV lines, and at the spot there will be. Uh, distribution transformer or pole mounted transformer. So from uh, substation to pole mounted transformer in different directions, there will be 11 kV lines. And uh, we know where we are going, so we know the load of that 11 kV line. So based on that, uh, we, we are going further. So what are the activities to be carried out? Preparation of specifications. First thing you will have to prepare the specification of every equipment. Then float the tender. You have to give advertisement in the paper. Advertisement will be of only four or five lines that you are rigging up a substation in this area. And uh, those who are interested in uh, giving their tenders. Uh, all vendors can come to this office at following address and take the tender. But uh, while they take the tender, usually people keep tender earnest money deposit. Because you see, any, any, any student also beg, oh, let, let us see how the tender looks like. So, so that it may not happen uh, and you may not have to uh, print 10,000 copies. You will type only few copies. And you will keep earnest money deposit 5,000, 10,000, whatever. No doubt that earnest money deposit is given back when the substation is commissioned. But till then, the uh, earnest money deposit is taken. So this is the thing. And tender, tenderers, vendors will give in two bids, technical bid. It has to be uh, sealed and Take price bid also is to be sealed and there are two different boxes. In both the boxes, they will come and drop the technical and price bid before the announced date. So this is very important. Receipt of tender. Now you have received the tender. Once you have received the tender, you will open out the tenders, but you will not open out price bid. You will open out only technical bid and you will scrutinize them. You will evaluate them. While you are evaluating with your requirement, some people might not be agreeing. So you will write a letter to them or uh, send an email to them that in this uh, area you are not matching with us. So you have to match. So what is your, what do you, what do you have to say? So you will also send an email and probably you may be satisfied. But if you are not satisfied, then you will go for technical discussions. Technical discussions means all manufacturers will come to your spot, come to the office, and you will discuss with them, right? And uh, the discussion will be written by stenotypist. Then she will go and type in a regular typing, and on that typing, all will sign. All will sign means now. Everybody have agreed to these things. Your sign means you have also agreed and the uh, vendors have also agreed. 
After doing all these things, you will finalize the order. Right, correct, because you, you will, you, uh, uh, you will know, but, but you will finalize the order for those only who are passing in technical bits. Those who are not passing in technical bits, you will not open the tender at all. You will not open the price bid at all. Other price bid will open. And usually in government L1, that is lowest is taken. But uh, in private countries, they can go for, in private industries, they can go for L2, L3 also, depending upon the, uh, uh, depending upon uh, how knowledgeable or how uh, popular the manufacturer is. So after having done so many things, uh, you have given the order to the person, but then he will not start manufacturing. He will start sending the detailed drawings. Detailed drawings means including mechanical drawings, size of the equipment, length, breadth, etc. Complete mechanical drawing and complete electroing, all schematics, right? And uh, everything, complete electric drawing also they will send. Uh, because you see, after the transformer is manufactured, and if you say that uh, your transformer is not coming in my gate, so how can I, because then it has wheels, so on wheels it is coming, but uh, then it is not coming because uh, the, Width of the gate is low. So that may not be allowed. So when you have, we have signed the mechanical drawing, you know that the transformer will come in. So then it is erected at the space. That you, not before, before that, you will approve the drawing. So once you have approved, they will start manufacturing. And once they start manufacturing, they will, when the manufacturing is over, they will give you a call for inspection and testing. Right? So you have to go there and inspect the equipment. That obviously mean that you should be thorough in everything. You should be thorough in everything. CT, PT, circuit breaker, this, that. Uh, my experience of uh, last three years in uh, very renowned colleges in Gujarat is that students do not want to learn. They are not interested in learning. So they do not hear the teacher at all. They just come. They come for events. They come for uh, enjoyment. They come as if the college is an, a, a uh, Mahabaleshwar or Kulu Manali. So, uh, I don't know what will happen of them. The colleges are telling big, big things that they will earn big salaries. But I personally feel that they will, they will be on the roads uh, and uh, they will not get the job because the technology is very advanced and they do not know the even the uh, normal technology. But anyway, if you know, you will inspect completely. I had gone for inspection of 132 by 66 kV, 150 mV at transformer. I wanted to understand everything. That is also right. Actually, what had happened that the person below, elect executive engineer, does not go for inspection. I was deputy engineer, so I cannot go. I was to simply uh, assist him. But then chief engineer was knowing me very well and he said that if Oza is going, then he will go alone. So I was caught up. Then I read the transformer uh, standards and uh, prepared myself and then uh, went to inspection. The temperature rise test of 132 by 66 kV 150 MBA transformer takes 36 hours. This also students are knowing, not knowing. What is temperature rise? How do they do? They measure the cold resistance of finding and 
take reading by thermometer every half an hour when three consecutive readings are less than one degree centigrade the temperature is said to be stabilized then they disconnect and by bridge they measure the hot resistance by hot and cold resistance they measure the temperature rise so i was seeing that uh, they were passing the current while passing the current they do not need the voltage so secondary short circuit it is like a short circuit test so current is full rated current is passing but at a very low voltage but full rated current means heat is generated so they tell told me that after 36 hours this will be over so sir you please go to hotel take rest and after 36 hours we'll call you and we'll show you the reading but because I was in Baroda electric meters and I was doing very many cheating with the inspectors, I was doing. So I know that cheating can be done. So I told that I will not go away from here. I will sit here on this chair and I will see the readings. So I told, have you not faith in us? I told, no, it's not a question of faith, but I'm coming for the first time to uh, inspect this big transformer. So I want to learn everything. That is the reason. So they also have understood, might have understood that it is not a question of learning. He wants to. So he came, but you will not come for lunch. I said, no, you will bring lunch here for me on this table. So for 36 hours, I was seeing temperature rise. I saw impulse test. I saw uh, wet uh, test and everything. So I, I saw all tests on transformer. It was manufactured by Crompton Greaves. So you have to inspect and testing the transformer. right? And if you are satisfied that it is passing all tests, then uh, you will give the uh, dispatch clearance that you can now dispatch the transformer to the spot because uh, transformer was at Mumbai and uh, it was to be sent to Sikka because it is always like that transformer manufacturer is one is it is in one place and uh, the transformer is to be installed at some other place so often it is to be placed uh, from one country to another country because you see now with nowadays we have testing facility but in earlier days we did not have testing facility so for testing we were sending the transformer by sea at at spot and after testing it used to come back so when the transformer is coming back in train or steamer or whatever it is some uh, transit damage may, may be done so when the transformer comes to your site, you will check up that whether any transit damage or not. And if at all some small transit damage is there, uh, the manufacturer will repair it. Then you have to do acceptance test because you see there are certain tests which are said as acceptance test and they have to be done at site. So at site you have to be ready to do those acceptances. They are not as, uh, 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 so to say, as uh, difficult or as time taking as type test, but uh, acceptance tests are to be done. So that you will do. Right? After, after doing that, what you have to do? After doing that, you have to install the transformer at the right place by wheels is there and there are uh, tracks so on tracks they will uh, keep the transformer and foundation is also required to be prepared so uh, cement foundation is then over there there is a tracks and on the track it is mounted after that is done now you have to do pre-commissioning test. Now everything is ready. So you have to do pre-commissioning. There are certain tests which are known as pre-commissioning test. 
and then when everything is done, final commissioning. Final commissioning means you will start the transformer and it will deliver the load. So actually speaking, uh, you would have done it 10 times because uh, PM Modi or Bhupendra Bhai Shah or somebody is going to come. So when he presses the button and load does not go, then it would be very bad. So you would have done commissioning by your hand. Some very small person would have done that. Uh, uh, inauguration must have been done. But official inauguration, those great people do. Uh, Prime Minister Modi or Upendra Pai Shah, who does not know ABC of electricity, but they know only how to press the button. And they will uh, donate the transformer to the nation. This whole process is known as commissioning. So, after going through these things, we will start the actual uh, project engineering. But before project engineering, I thought that substation layout is important. Because there are many kinds of substation layout and accordingly the engineering varies. Substation layout are single bus bar scheme, single bus bar scheme with sectionalizing isolator, single bus bar scheme with sectionalizing breaker, double bus bar scheme and one and half breaker uh, scheme. So we will discuss the, the schemes once by one by one so that you may come to know what are the merits and relative merits and demerits of each uh, layout, right? So this is a single, single, simple bus bar system. Single bus bar and simple bus bar, very simple. There is only one bus bar. Try to understand that this is single line diagram. One bus bar means three lines, R, Y, B, right? But there is one bus bar. I have not shown isolators and many things right now because I am not interested in that. I am interested in showing you the bus bar arrangement and what are the advantages, etc. Two incomers are coming. Incomers means power is coming. Then isolators are there. Then there is a breaker and then there is isolator. On both sides of breaker, isolator is a must. Reason we will see further. Then it is terminated on bus. CTPT also I have yet not shown. Then from bus, four outgoing feeders. That means they are not, uh, there is no source. It is load only. Four uh, outgoing uh, feeders are going. And everywhere there is breaker and isolator. This is a simple single bus bar system. Now, what are the features? What are the advantages? Most economical arrangement it is very economical. It occupies very less space. And it is simplest arrangement. These three are advantages, but Disadvantages are many more. So single bus bar system is not used. Disadvantages is no flexibility. What is the what is the what is the meaning of no flexibility? If there is a bus fault, if there is a fault on the bus bar, complete substation is gone. 50 MV, 150 MV, whatever it is. Complete substation is gone. All consumers fed from uh, the uh, substation are in dark, so they are in discomfort. Keep about discomfort, right? But there are certain industries also, they will lose power. So they are manufacturing 5,000 rupees, 10,000 rupees per hour. So for five hours, if it is remain, remaining closed, then they lose a long revenue, big revenue. Not only that, but for five hours, you are keeping the uh, that 
that, that was part of fun. Huh? You are not feeding electricity. So meters are not running and therefore electricity authority is not getting money. That is that is a very, very big disadvantage of the uh, scheme. No flexibility. There is no flexibility. Complete dark out in case of bus fault. I talked. No guarantee for power system stability. You see, uh, this substation is say, of 50 MVA or 100 MVA. At that time, abruptly 100 MVA lo is lost. That may lead to power system instability. Instability means generators will sleep in poles. Uh, pole sleeping will occur and generator will start getting disconnected from the bus. And if all generators get disconnected from bus, then it is known as cascaded tripping. And to resume the power from cascaded tripping may take time of the order of uh, three, four hours to maximum seven hours because thermal power plant cannot be started within a minute. Hydro power plant can be started within half an hour. Diesel power plant can be started within five, ten minutes. Gas turbine power plant, you can start within five minutes, ten minutes. So certain plants can be started faster, but thermal power plant takes seven hours to start. Even if it is not got completely cool, 1150 degrees centigrade is the temperature. It starts becoming cool. And if it's cool, NAS has go to 500 degrees at this and you start. And if you are successful, then also you will have to go from 500 to 1100. That does not take a small time. Right? So this is very important. Uh, my colleague at Vanakpuri was my classmate also. He told that highest and record breaking uh, service giving to a uh, faulted part was 1.145 minutes. A country or 45 minutes they unko de diya tha. Engineers have to be very perfect, very clear, and there should be having consistency. That if one engineer uh, says he, there is no time to speak, he will simply. Uh, say that number one, number one finger he will bake it on. So others will mean that what is the meaning of number one? They will do number one. Then he will do number three. So they will do number three. So that way only the power can be resumed fast. Otherwise, resumption of power in thermal power station, nuclear power station is very, 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 very difficult. Right? So, that is the uh, single bus bar arrangement. Long downtime. You see, if it is a sustained fault on bus, uh, until the time one hour, two hour you repair, power is not available. And that is known as downtime. Downtime means interrupted. The, from the point the fault occurred up to the time you give back the power. You repair things and give back the power. That is not dumb time. In case of breaker maintenance, transmission line has to be interrupted. How can you uh, maintain the breaker? You see, if you have to maintain this breaker, breaker you cannot maintain alone. If you make the breaker off, the power is coming from the top. If isolator is not off, power is coming. The person will get shocked. Shock means deadly stock, fatal stock. Person will die there and then. So isolator has to be opened first on both the sides, and then breaker will be opened. Then they will do the breaker maintenance. So for breaker maintenance, isolation breakers have to be opened. That is a that is the worst. That was true. Now, substation design features of single bus bar arrangement. Yes, uh, we, were, we are talking about this. Uh, now, 
we are going to features of single bus bar with sectionalizing isolator. We are adding one section lending isolator. When I say it is one, it is not one. It is a single line diagram. So one means R by B three sectionalizing isolators are there. So cost of three sectionalizing isolators is added, but isolators are not very costly. So it is not a big deal. Hmm? But yet there is no guarantee of power system stability. At as isolator cannot break the current, so isolator is always kept on. It is made of only by differential protection, right? Because it does not have arc quenching capability. But one advantage is that partial flexibility it is giving. How it is giving partial flexibility? Uh, how it is? How it is giving partial flexibility? Uh, I will have to bring that slide. To partial flexibility, it will give like this. That uh, if there is a fault on left side of the bus, right? So uh, that isolator, uh, that is the bus isolator, bus sectionalizer is called there. What on here? Bus sectionalizer means this. Bus sectionalizer means uh, this, my dear friends. Bus sectionalizer. Bus sectionalizer is closed. So because it is closed, both the breakers will close. Uh, both the breakers will open to clear the fault. So for small time, the power will be off. So power system stability is surely in danger. Because uh, the switching action you have to do, you will be doing that you will be doing slowly. You cannot do it within milliseconds. So what you will do first? First you will open out the sectionalizing isolator. Left side per fault hai, to wo dur kar de aapne. And then you make the right side isolator breaker on. The sequence is first the isolator is to be made on and then the breaker is made on. And similarly load side. So right side load will be fed so partial dark out is there full dark out is not there that is the advantage of uh, the sectionalizing breaker so with sectionalizing breaker it occupies less space comparatively see sectionalizing but sectionalizing isolator are not very big so very big space is not there Yet it is comparatively cost, uh, cheap. It is not that costly because cost of only three isolators is added. So not very costly also. Some flexibility is added as I, as, I, as I have discussed. But because the circuit breaker is open in starting, you will keep it open, on, uh, uh, you will keep it closed only, you will, keep, you will not keep it open. You have to keep it closed only. Because why, why we were going, going for uh, uh, double bus bar arrangement? What was the reason for going to, uh, sorry, reason for going to double bus bar arrangement? Jan to going to double bus bar arrangement. Why, why did we go? We go because we want some flexibility. That, is, that was the reason for going to double bus bar arrangement, right? So, uh, uh, sorry, uh, single bus bar arrangement with isolated, we are talking of this. We are talking of this isolator. Why, why we are keeping this isolator? Because uh, we want some flexibility. So because of this flexibility, we are keeping this arrangement. So obviously, 
uh, you have to be careful. But cost is not that big. Cost is not that big. Uh, yet it is comparatively simple element. It does not occupy big space, only three isolators. Some flexibility is added, as I told you. And partial dark out in case of bus fault. Complete people, half of the people you will be able to feed. That is the advantage of uh, single bus bar arrangement. Single bus bar arrangement is usually useful up to 11 kV bus. 6.6 .6 kV, 3.3 .3 kV, 11 kV. Beyond 11 kV, people do not go for single, I mean, uh, bus bar arrangement with sectionalizing isolator. And they go for 66 kV. They go for bus bar arrangement with uh, sectionalizing breaker. So let us see uh, how the scheme with sectionalizing breaker looks like. Now there is a breaker. So cost has gone high. Breaker is costly. Breaker cost is dependent on its breaking capacity. So breaker is costly. It occupies space also. And one breaker means on both sides you have to have isolator. I have shown two, but they are not two, they are six because there is a single line diagram. But this scheme is very good. This scheme is very good because it adds to yet more flexibility than single bus bar arrangement. What flexibility that if there is a fault on left side of the bus, if there is a fault on left side of the bus, what will trip? The protective arrangement is such that breaker one and sectionalizing breaker will trip. Two will not at all trip. So that side people will not come to know that the bus fault was there. Right? That is very good and even for a single moment, the energy will not go. Electrical energy will be available. And that way partial guarantee of the, uh, uh, so to say, the instability. Instability will not be that bad. Partial guarantee is there, not full guarantee. Upside is gone. but partial guarantee to uh, that instability is there. And when you want to do bus maintenance, then also you can schedule half the bus you maintain today, half the bus you maintain next week, right? So many people are not affected at the, at the, at the same time. At the same time. So, this, these advantages are there of sectionalizing breaker. So usually 66 kV schemes are using, 66 kV buses are using sectionalizing breaker. So that was this. So this is all what I talked, so I am not talking. I am not talking. Uh, these are all things I have talked. And, and when you want to read, you can pause the video and read also. Now, what are the features of single bus bar arrangement? That also I told you. Long downtime down for half the bus. For half the bus, downtime is not there. In case of breaker maintenance, transmission line has to be interrupted. When you want to do breaker maintenance, say I want to do breaker maintenance of breaker one, then I will have to make the breaker one off and both the isolators off. So that line will not get power. You will not be able to receive power from that incomer. That is that is the disadvantage. Right? Uh, 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 then. One bay is added. Bay. What is bay? In bay, you have to keep certain equipment. So, for that sectionalizing breaker, one bay is added, and therefore more space is required. 
and you know what is the cost of the land. You, you, you can ask your father that what was the price of your building? It may be 28 lakhs, 30 lakhs, 50 lakhs. I have bought the house in 81 lakhs. So land is costly. So as you go on increasing the equipment, the space required will be more. So yes, space required is more. Flexibility is added. That all I told you. Right. Uh, so this uh, sectionalizing breaker we have completed. After having completed sectionalizing breaker, that is uh, uh, bus scheme. Yet two uh, bus schemes are remnant. Bus scheme with double bus and bus scheme with one and half breaker. A little odd. One and a half breaker means one breaker and another breaker is to be divided into two parts. It is not so. It is not like that. One and a half breaker scheme means between two feeders we are using three breakers. So scheme becomes very costly. But very good scheme. All 400 kV, 765 kV, 1200 kV systems use one and a half breaker scheme. Anyway, about those schemes we will talk later. So I think before we go for project engineering, we should understand the bus bar schemes and that we are doing. So if you want to learn all these things, you will have to read my friends. And if you will read, then I will earn read hours. So please stay tuned with Adapt Me. I want the name of the Adapt Me throughout the world. Millions and billions of engineers should know what is Adapt Me and what Adapt Me is doing. Uh, and Adapt Me is giving you this knowledge free of cost. You have to simply go to YouTube and uh, search for Adapt Me. E D U P M E. No space nahi hai. Continuous word E D U P M E. And you will you will arrive at that E D U P M E. Touch the E D U P M E and uh, you will see many. And then there is a name video. You touch video and you will be able to see video. By now I have uh, uploaded 50 videos on power system protection. That power system protection is very tough. Students of any universities over at least India, I will not talk of world, but they do not know my power system protection because it is very tough. I am not talking from the books, I am talking from the field. So, uh, I have written a book on power system protection and it is published by a very known publisher, international publisher. But now after uh, 14 reprints they have done, but after 14 reprints they have closed it because they found that students are finding that book very tough. They are not understanding. And when student does not understand, he asks a question to faculty. And unfortunately, faculty also does not understand that book. And the publisher wants money. So he has discontinued my book and he has promoted another book. But that another book is not talking anything about industrial practices. And when you go to industry, you are going to see these things. So these things are very important. So now I have I am giving salute to the uh, salute to the uh, colleges. I was going as a visiting faculty in very renowned colleges in Gujarat, but uh, students are not uh, learning there. Uh, probably copsies are learning there. Uh, Fifty copsies are sitting. 
they are not hearing any word. They do not want to hear. Uh, they are very known colleges taking two and a half fleck of rupees per year. So they are getting admission to foreign countries. There they take computer science or IT. And because computer science and IT is very uh, useful, uh, somehow they get job. And here they are paying 80 lakhs, but in foreign countries they pay 7 lakhs or 8 lakhs. So there also they pass them and give good grades. So they get good job and they are happy. But those who cannot go to foreign countries, who do not have money, I am sure that they will have to go to roads and ask for uh, ask for things. Uh, I don't know how many are Gujaratis, but if they are there, they can't make me part of so teachers are also not knowing that those students will have to uh, ask for food. They do not will have food. They will not be able to uh, give food to their children and to their wives. They will suffer. They will not have good house. But unfortunately students don't understand uh, but my industrial friends do understand. My students who have learned in Adapt Me, they are very good students. And today, a student who has who had passed in 1990, he is earning a big, big amount. He is earning a big amount. But when I asked him what is his gross salary, he said that I have been taken a uh, on stamp paper. I have been uh, they told and I have signed that I cannot say my gross salary to my wife also. And when he says that I, he cannot say his gross salary to his wife, that means it must be some five crores of rupees per year. I, I don't know exactly because he did not tell me. Must be so. So my those students, I, I joined BBM in 1986. My first student was in 1988. 1988 to 2012, my, my journey in BBM. Those students are very sharp and learning and earning more than me and more efficient than me and they are no more than me. But from 2012, BVM was also started deteriorating and all colleges in Gujarat and probably all colleges in India are deteriorating. Uh, there is one university, I forgot the name, uh, very, very well-known university throughout the world in India. It is Muslim university, I forgot its name. But my father was a uh, national awardee for four times. So once uh, the person took him to show different places in that city. So he took there also to that university also. The vice principal was there because he was talking to uh, the uh, the uh, national, uh, those who have got the national uh, price. Uh, uh, so to them he was talking. So vice chancellor was talking. Vice chancellor came up to the gate and then he introduced the university in this way. That when I was there, when I started my career, Nam Naitha, there was no name of the university, but work was there. Nam Naitha, Kam Tha, he was speaking in Hindi. Many, many of uh, my friends will not be able to understand Hindi, so I, I translate. There was no name, but work was there. Now, name is there, but work is not there. 
So in none of the engineering colleges, there is no work. And for, for one reason or the other, the government also has given so many duties that teachers are teaching 12% and doing other things. Neck, neck has come. My university is neck accredited. That is of no use. You have to teach the student. Neck has no use. In one of the very important colleges, I went and one equipment I needed. I asked head of the department. He showed me the equipment. And when I took out that equipment, the technician told me that they were taking out the equipment now to, after 10 years. There are 30 PhD faculties. 30 PhD faculties did not touch that equipment and none of the faculties knew how to use this, use that equipment. So uh, the I am not dependent on universities, colleges and students, faculties, none. I am interested in those who are working in the industries and who have to do this work. I am sure that this will be very useful to them. So uh, please stay tuned with Head Up Me and please don't only like, uh, just uh, open the video, see for two minutes and like does not me work hours, does not me feed the read hours, right? So uh, read hours are important in in YouTube. So my dear friends will please do that and will share this video. If they find that this is important, slowly we are going to do everything. We are going to decide how much area will be required for the substation and we'll see each and every equipment in detail and uh, we will prepare the specification for the equipment. Right? And uh, that way we will be able to do uh, quite a good lot of work on, on this. So for that, you will have to uh, remember, adapt me. Till then, my friends, uh, thank you and good day.